I'm David Schreiner Khan, and this is Smashing the Plateau. No matter how successful you are, there's probably at least one area where roadblocks are keeping you from fully achieving your goals. Fortunately, you've come to the right place. Every expert I interview on this podcast is different, but they all have one thing in common. They know how to fix problems that keep us stuck. The mission of Smashing the Plateau is helping solopreneur experts build more stable and consistent recurring revenue in their business. Smashing the Plateau is part of the best network, providing expert individual and team mentorship, peer support, and curated educational content that reinforces and expands our goal of the show, helping solopreneur experts get the recurring revenue they deserve. To learn more about us and Best Network and schedule time to speak with me about how to smash your plateau, go to smashingtheplateau.com slash best network. That's smashingtheplateau.com slash best network. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Kim Julien. Kim is the founder of Finding Your Fiji. She's a feng shui expert and psychic. Her feng shui expertise, intuitive skills, personal development, and business knowledge create a unique approach to resolving your business and life issues. Kim graduated with a business degree from the University of St. Thomas and is a certified feng shui practitioner, international feng shui guild red ribbon practitioner and mentor and certified angel card reader. In 2017, Kim moved from Minnesota to Maui sight unseen to make her dream life a reality. Through her private coaching, feng shui consultations and angel readings, Kim brings awareness to those things that are keeping you stuck and helps bring harmony to your head, your heart, and your home. She's passionate about creating a life and business filled with ease, daily magic, and joy, and guiding you in finding your Fiji, whatever that may be for you. Kim, welcome to the show. Thanks, David. Super excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on. So you moved from Minnesota to Maui, sight unseen. I'd love to hear a little bit about what prompted you to make that move? Yeah, it's really kind of wild. I've always felt, I, I've lived in Minnesota all my life. I was born and raised there and don't love winter. So that was one thing. So that, that rules out about 10 months out of the year. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I just, every year I kept asking myself, why do I live here? So that was a piece of it. But then I also kept getting sort of the nudge from spirit or that universal guidance. I kept getting messages about Maui. Like Maui kept popping up in lots of different ways. And when I checked in, I really got a clear, strong message that I was meant to move here. So I, in in my, the world that I live in now, I really do trust the guidance that I receive and really just trusted that guidance, sold my home and basically everything I own and picked up and moved here. I essentially closed on my house on a Monday and on a Tuesday, I got on a plane and moved here. And it really, truly has been magic ever since. Wow. So, you know, given the fact that you have a business degree, really curious to hear your story about how you ended up moving into the feng shui arena and a little bit about your story. Sure. Yeah. So the feng shui thing is interesting. I was, we originally, I was, I was married and we had uh, two young boys and we lived originally in just like a small, like one and a half story house, um, but very square. Like it was, you know, there weren't any, what we call in feng shui missing pieces. Right. So we built this new home and beautiful new home and found some things that were not going so well. We had plenty of money coming in, but it was going right out the back door. Our relationship for some reason was suffering and I just was at the library one day looking for something and stumbled upon a feng shui book. I started reading about it, started actually applying what I was learning and it worked. And I was like, wow, this really, there's something to this. And so I really just kind of studied and did a lot of my own research and things like that for many, many years, probably 15 years before I actually even got certified, but just found that it was very, very helpful and useful. And for those people listening who may not have any clue what feng shui is, can you describe it sort of in a, a nutshell? Yeah. So feng shui 
I like to say is about creating an environment that energetically supports what you want to bring into your life. So it's really providing that sort of balance or that earthly anchor for the things that you're wanting to be, do, and have. And it helps speed up the law of attraction. It definitely helps you make shifts and changes in your life a lot faster. A lot of people think it's about moving everything around in your house. It definitely is not that. We A lot of the changes that we make are very, very small, and often they're even hidden where people wouldn't even necessarily see them. The main point is the intention. What is it that you're wanting to draw into your life? So what, what's an example? Sure. So an example would be if you have a what we call a front door back door alignment. So if you're standing at your front door and you can roll a ball and it would go out a back door like a patio door or something like that, that is what we call a front door back door alignment. So you may have money coming in, but it's going right out the back door. One of the things that we would do is we can place something round between the front and back door. So that might even be like in the case of one of my clients, she placed a round bowl and just put like fruit in it, happened to have a table that came between those two spots. And that essentially dispersed or balanced the energy for that, you know, the energy that was flowing in. Now the the money stays with her. It doesn't flow out the back door like it had been. Right. So are you talking about a literal table or figurative? So in this case, she happened to have a dining room table that happened to be like her kitchen was before the patio door. So she happened to have an actual dining room table there. And so she just placed a bowl on it. Sometimes we have a situation where there isn't somewhere to actually set something on. So we might hang a crystal from the ceiling to help balance the energy. Mm, so the physical helps also with the non-physical. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. Got it. And in your business, whom do you typically serve? So I typically hear from people a sense of them feeling stuck or some area in their life that they have not been able to shift or they're maybe even just having some confusion. Because the other piece of what I do is that, you know, sort of connection with the angels, which also helps bring forth guidance and direction for people. So typically people are feeling stuck or they're making some sort of big change and maybe feeling some trepidation about doing that. Mm -hmm. And how do you typically work with them? So I have a couple different ways that I work with people. I do private coaching and that is something where I actually work one-on-one -on -one with them and we incorporate feng shui attributes as well as angel guidance. And then of course my, my business expertise, if they have a business that we're working on, we'll bring that in as well. I also do individual private angel readings. So that would be something where people would just um, schedule an hour or two hours with me. And we basically go through whatever's happening in their life and make um, suggestions Basically, it's not me. I'm I'm basically channeling the information. So I'm sharing information that's coming through for them about what they need to know. And then I also do actual feng shui consultations. So I will take a look at people's spaces and see what's going on there feng shui wise and make really simple recommendations about how they can shift that. And now since you're in Hawaii, do you work with people exclusively locally or also do you work with people virtually? No. Yeah, I don't have too many virtual. I mean, I don't have any too many local clients. I have a few people that I work with, uh, realtors and such uh, for feng shui. But I actually, most of the clients that I work with are virtual. I have people that are all over the country, all over the world that connect with me. And it's so easy to do now with technology, with Zoom and Skype and even just get hopping on the phone. Right. And what kinds of results do the kinds of people you serve typically achieve? So one of the main things, uh, particularly right away that people experience is just a sense of peace and calm, a sense of like that they're on the right track, that they are headed in the right direction. It's oftentimes when people do particularly like angel readings with me is they just feel like when they get on the phone with me, they're, they're maybe upset about something or they're feeling anxious about something. And by the time we're done with the call, they just feel that super sense of peace and calm. And within people's spaces, so with the feng shui, 
what I hear a lot of times from people is that they feel more settled. They have more clarity. They're able to focus on what they're needing to do. They're able to accomplish more and they have people being helpful to them in their lives. They also have a, just a sense of more of a flow. So they get, you know, people actually just finding them out of nowhere, they like to say, right? But we all know it's energy. They're attracting them to them. And it just is an easier, they find things a lot easier and less effortful when they're doing their work, their business, their life. Mm. And Kim, given the fact that you have this combination of business background and the, the feng shui expertise, what do you find can be helpful, particularly for solopreneurs when they're struggling to build consistent, stable, recurring revenue? Yeah, so one of the things that I've really found is that genuine connection. And so one of the things that I typically do when I am reaching out to people, so I don't, you know, I'm not a salesperson. I think we all, you know, obviously when we're in business, we have to sell, right? But that's not my, like, that's not my style to be really like salesy. So my, my, what I found that works really well is really just genuinely connecting with people. When somebody comes into my world, so for instance, if they send me a um, connection on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, I will actually invite them to a virtual coffee chat. And that's just an opportunity. It's like a 20 to 30 minute call where it's just an opportunity for me to get to know them. I typically will find out a little bit more about them and what they do and then also offer them a couple suggestions about what they might do to shift the energy or like in, in the case of today, I just had a, a couple calls this morning and the one uh, we're just looking at all of a sudden we've got some really collaboration ideas, some things that we can do to collaborate with one another and assist one another. So for me, that really genuine connection is what makes all the difference because then I get people that just for you know, me not even asking about it. And then they're like, well, I really want to work with you. How can I work with you? And so it's not me having to sell. They're just, they're feeling that genuine caring and that connection and, and that draws them to me. Mm. And for your own business, what have you found to be some of the ways to take these relationships and create stability in terms of revenue? Yeah. So a couple different things that I do. I do obviously the private coaching, private angel readings, but I also have group options. So a lot of times people will come into my world through uh, like my angel message circle or a group coaching program. And that gives them an opportunity to get to know me. So I feel like it's important to have multiple ways that people can work with you. And whether, you know, some people maybe aren't ready for a private coaching or they're not sure that you're a good fit for them. And so oftentimes when they get to know you in a group, then they're like, oh my gosh, I definitely need more of this. Like, what would it be like to work with you one-on-one -on -one when I'm getting so much value out of the group work? What, what advice do you have for people that have never run a group before about how to get it started, how to start the first one? Yeah, make it easy. I would just say make it easy. I, I, The easiest group that I run right now is my Angel Message Circle. It's a Facebook group. And I literally get on there and do like Facebook Live like three times a month. Once a week, I post a message for the group, an angel message for the group and a, an affirmation of sorts. And then I post other things as well. But I would just say, do it, you know, make it simple, make it really easy. If you want to do like a Zoom meeting or a free conference call, something like that. But just however you set it up, make it easy and a way that works for you, not necessarily what other people want, but what do you like to do and do that? Right. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about coming up with a pricing model for group work, particularly for those people that ha haven't explored that kind of model yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I typically tend to do my pricing intuitively. So I usually am, you know, going to a meditation essentially and ask my angels and guides, like, what is the best price or what is the price I'm meant to offer for this? I recently actually just got a, um, over the weekend, I had a meditation and uh, it came through that I'm meant to raise my prices, uh, my 
angel readings. So different aspects of my business have different pricing models to them. But I would say, you know, look at what you're providing, but not just in the sense of like the value that they're getting in that moment, but the potential. So for me, my angel message circle is really a low price item but it's giving people an opportunity to get to know me. And that often will lead to them doing deeper work with me and more one-on-one -on -one work. So it's like, you have to look at kind of what is the reason that you're setting up the group and what are you, what is that feeding into essentially? Right. Right. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Kim, what do you find to be challenging about being a solopreneur? I think it probably the most challenging thing is the inconsistency of income in some senses. So when you have the groups, that's another beautiful thing about doing the groups, then they're paying you monthly. Like me, I have it set up on an auto pay. So they pay me monthly. And I do the same thing with my, I have an angel reading membership. So people that want a reading once a month, they are on auto pay. So those type of things are good, but it's the inconsistency with like feng shui consults. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily have a consistent um, number of people that book feng shui consults with me every month. So it's really balancing, I think, the the consistent income with the, you know, the flow of other things that come in as well. And then just kind of on a technical basis, keeping up with the social media and all of the things that I'm doing in that regard is also <laughs> something that's challenging for me. Do you have uh, any particular methodology with social media that you find works well? Yeah, I find that scheduling posts really help. I use Buffer to schedule posts so that at least I have, you know, some specific things that are, that are going out there every single day. Like I do my decision making dates as a as a like a picture meme that goes out every day. And the other thing that I often schedule is when I have angel readings that have been, I do like a daily little mini reading and I'll schedule the posts like for the whole week. So I find chunking it, like doing things in chunks is easier for me. And then I don't have to think about it for a week and then it comes up again and then I schedule again. The decision-making dates I actually schedule for a whole month out. So I do a whole month at a time and then don't have to think about it again until, you know, the end of the month. Right. One of the things I'm hearing is that, that there are ways that you create structure in what you do, particularly when it's not serving a recurring revenue group cohort. Right. And that creating that structure for yourself is helpful. It's very helpful. And for me, especially as an intuitive, I need the structure because if I don't have the structure, then I'm just like following what I, you know, I feel inspired to do. And then I don't get the little details of things that need to be done. So for me, the structure is super important. Yeah. All great advice. Kim, whom do you know personally who has been remarkably successful at smashing plateaus? So... I love this question. It's such an amazing question. And the person that came to mind for me is her name is Amy Loken and her company is called Mood Modular. And this woman is just an amazing soul. She is actually an engineer and she created a, a product that is um, essentially for displays and things like that. I actually, gosh, I'm trying to remember how many years ago. I met her quite a number of years ago at an event back in Minnesota. And it, the product that she has is so revolutionary. It's really lightweight. It's really easy to carry with you. And it also has like ability to change it up so you don't have to have the same display all of the time. And she really has just done some amazing things as far as uh, creating for her the the revenue stream of income. In fact, she has a, a an ad this month in the Oprah magazine um, on page 80 of the Oprah magazine this month. Um, this is now that we're filming this is in May. But yeah, so she just has really um, some super creative ideas and very, very just a genuinely kind person and giving person as well. Sounds great. Uh, what can we look forward to in the near future from you? What's coming up? So I am in the process of writing a book. It's called Minnesota to Maui, and it is about my journey here and essentially the, the tools and things that I used, including feng shui and spiritual guidance to be able to do that. And along with that, I'm actually launching a group coaching program. It's a hybrid 
uh, group coaching as well as private coaching, and it's Find Your Maui. So it's essentially about helping people find and live their dream life, whatever that might be for them. And it's a beautiful opportunity to essentially walk through all the steps of what it takes to make big, significant change and small changes in your life. Sounds good. Kim, do you have a free gift that you want to share with our audience? I do. I have my nine best tips for attracting abundance. It's called nine fast feng shui fixes to attract abundance that I'd love to offer. And I also was inspired to offer a coupon code for your audience to save $50 off any of my VIP half day sessions or my feng shui consultations. And that coupon code would be podcast. So they can literally put in that coupon code and save $50 on any one of those items. Great. And what's the link for the free gift? So they can hop onto my website at findingyourfiji.com and they'll see the free gift on the right hand side. And then also there's a schedule button on the upper right hand corner as well. Sounds great. And in addition to your website, how can listeners learn more about you and follow you? The best way is my YouTube channel, and that is under my name, Kim Juleen, J-U-L-E-N. And on YouTube, I offer just a lot of really um, free, great information, feng shui tips every Friday, angel readings on a monthly for the Zodiac, and just lots of good stuff. I'm also on LinkedIn and on um, Instagram as Finding Your Fiji and Facebook as Finding Your Fiji as well. So lots of different places to connect with me. Sounds great. Well, Kim, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on Smashing the Plateau. My guest today has been Kim Juleen, Feng Shui Intuitive Coach with Finding Your Fiji. Thank you again, Kim, for joining us. Thanks for having me. So much fun. Thank you for listening to Smashing the Plateau. The mission of Smashing the Plateau is helping solopreneur experts build more stable and consistent recurring revenue in their business. Smashing the Plateau is part of the best network, providing expert individual and team mentorship, peer support, and curated educational content that reinforces and expands our goal of the show, helping solopreneur experts get the recurring revenue they deserve. To learn more about us and Best Network and schedule time to speak with me about how to smash your plateau, go to smashingtheplateau.com slash best network. That's smashingtheplateau.com slash best network. We want to help you smash your plateau.